Team go. What are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language? Aliens come up. Smoke them if you got them, let's see. Okay. I like to keep this for close encounters. Game over, man! Game over! Oh, all right. um, oh I know. I know. Remember when I was a kid? I, I, for whatever reason, I, I did not. I did not like him as as, as an actor. He what? Like, I know. My favorite movie of all time, Aliens. I can watch it. I've, I've watched it Aliens? every year a thousand times. Aliens. Okay. I get it. Alien is the better movie from sure. an artistic perspective. But Aliens, you got the Colonial Marines. You get to introduce the Queen. That's right. It's so much more action. That's right. Starship Troopers come play a role in this. I love Starship Troopers too. That's a good one. That's a good one too. I'm war. doing my part. <laughs> it's like war propaganda, but it's like satire. So exactly. It's so good. Exactly. So and the shower it. scene. Let's not forget. Well, that's true. That's true. I grew up quick. What um. <laughs> What are we doing today? What, uh, what, what's, what's on the menu, good sir? I, I believe we're having another pointless automotive podcast session. Uh, yeah, another one. Another? Yes. As, as uh, the, the great or not great DJ Cali once said, another one. Another one. It is. Uh, we the best music. So um, we just went through it. We survived a year uh, We, we did existence. survive a year. We survived a fistful of podcast episodes. We survived, uh, knock on... Steal uh, a pandemic, yes, um, which is may or may not still be raging on, depending on when you're <laughs> listening to this. Um, but we did close out 2021. Wow. I yeah, know. I keep forgetting that, man. I keep, I keep thinking. I know. I keep thinking it's 20, 2020. <laughs> Let's go 2021. We got this. <laughs> Hindsight is 2020. Ah, hey now. Um, we, we, I, 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 I said we we're gonna make this not. Pun heavy, but here we are, 2021. So I think that's it. The pun. Should we just do exactly? Should we just do like a a year in review? Yeah. I think, um, I think that's what we talked about, reflecting on some of our uh, you know all automotive stuff, but just kind of reflecting on what we've done uh, in the car world over the course of 2021. And yes, most of it fond memories, I'm sure. Hopefully. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to dwell on the uh, the, the low points. Um, which there really weren't too many as far as my car stuff. I mean, it was a good year as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, what, did, what did you do in 21? What were some of your, what, what was one thing? We'll just, maybe we'll just bandy this back and forth. You, you spit something out, I'll spit something out. What, yeah. what did you, what was a highlight? Well, for me, uh, purchasing cars is always a fun thing. And always. I know you're in the same boat as always. that. So, uh, shockingly, uh, put my roster together of cars I purchased this year. Uh, I feel like I purchased way more than this, but I only purchased seven vehicles. That's it? It's unacceptable. Yeah, and you gotta double that for, for 2022. I'm really let down, I've done a lot of reflection. No, but seriously, <laughs> like, I, I, I spent most of the year, I bought a new property, so I was like actually fixing up a property, like the shop space and everything, so that right. consumed most of the year. Sure. Uh, and uh, you know, working a normal human job up until the end of April, so right. like, honestly, I, I'm i kind of shocked I still purchased seven cars <laughs> during all sure. that. Sure. But, uh, let me bust through my list. Is that cool? Yeah, like, yeah. What, what, what are these? What's the, the the list of seven? Pretty good stuff. So I picked up a 1990 uh, Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo. Oh boy, those! Okay. Uh, I think I caught that great right. car. Yeah, when they were starting to get out of control, and they're they're pretty pretty premium price right now. Sure, so. sure. Super happy to find one of those that wasn't completely ratted out, which is pretty much yeah. How it's red. Done. It's red. It's a manual. It's a two seater, right? Yeah, great interior. Sexy yeah. boxes. Yeah, the turbos didn't come with two plus two, uh, so no back seat. Yep. So just straight up. Um, another one, a car I've honestly been looking like at purchasing for probably twenty years or so. Okay. A Dodge Neon ACR. Yes. Uh, and just recently was in a review on regular car reviews. I don't know if you watched that. I, I did not see that one. He no. was he was just it was just about the Neon. So he okay. talks about how the Neon was like a Civic competitor and like. Yeah, the first time Chrysler actually competed in that segment and did a good job. They did do a like, good job. The Neon's mean, amazing. That's a car I know one day we're going to have to do a, an episode on cars that need to come back to market, but I think that's one of them. It was so successful. It had a good engine, good transmission. Yep. Uh, looked awesome. Still looks great today. Hi. Yeah, with a cute face. Yeah. And that's such a good ad campaign. Uh, but they did mention the ACR just for a little bit, and he's like, sure. "These, that's the like, that's the one to get the pinnacle." But good luck, they don't exist. Yeah, um, but been. I, I found one. It was in another yeah. state. Bought it sight unseen. Uh, guy was super cool. He had actually mm. just bought a first gen DSM, so I actually okay. sent him some parts, which was uh -huh. kind of part of the deal, yeah. uh, and helped him out with some things he was doing, like a timing belt. So I just was there for like free advice, whatever he wanted to call. Sweet. But he had this ACR. It was outside of his scope to fix up. It okay. still drives and everything. It needs a lot of work. Just tired. Though. Yeah, just tired. Um, I can't remember the mileage on it, but it's a '98, so it has the two liter dual overhead cam. Right. 
it is an ACR, so I backed up by looking at the old service. The only way you can qualify this, there's not sure. anywhere on a title, not a badge. You have to look on the service, you have to look for a checklist of like items that were optioned. Right, and with the ACR. The ACR. Oh, it was like rear, rear discs and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so yeah, all wheel uh, disc brakes all the way around. It has way bigger sway bars than even, uh, different sway bars than the RT, which is right. cool. Right, uh, And then the bumper, the the fog light delete bumper. So it's sure. like a bumper with the fog light provisions with nothing in there, the cool. big, big sign in there. There you go. So super okay. pumped. Uh, ACR. Yeah. And uh, I bought the Mercury Tracer LTS, another cool yes. car. Uh, super rare to find that manual. There's probably a handful still driving around, yeah. uh, to be honest. Uh, this Dodge Daytona Shelby Z we just uh, yeah, talked about. Yeah, but I did not plan to purchase this car. I woke up one morning. I always look at Marketplace before I, I'm stretching in bed. Exactly. Marketplace. It's like, you know, like the old man that sits at the, at the, the coffee table with a cup of coffee and unfurls the newspaper and gives a big flip yeah and then sits there and goes through with the reading glasses on the on the bridge of his nose that's you except with marketplace exactly and yeah. I, I check it all the time and i wasn't even searching daytona it actually knows me so well the algorithm that it put it on top of my feed because <laughs> it got listed that morning uh so that was a turbo k car yeah Enjoy. like it's a, one owner you know look at this condition i'm like oh my god and it's like 30 minutes from here, so. There you go, the uh, algorithm works. Oh, they got me, man, they got me figured out. <laughs> uh, and then I bought the Honda Accord V6 Coupe Manual mm -hmm. off of this guy, so yeah. across the table from me. That's it. Um, but that, I'm excited to work on that one. I bought that at the beginning of the year. Uh, bought a 92 <laughs> Miata. Yeah. Every time I sell my Miata, I need a new one, so. That's right. Here we so are. Miata. And then uh, LX470 Lexus that oh, I Lexus bought here. and kind of turned it around and sold it pretty quick. But those are my seven cars I purchased in 2021. Good variety. Uh, yes. And most of them are still with me. So I don't know if that's a that's a great strategy, but we'll get we'll get through some of those this year. Sure. Well, no, that's Hopefully. yeah, exactly. And especially considering there's going to be another one, another stray you're going to drive home between here and there in some capacity. At least a handful of strays. Exactly. Just the one you can't pass up because it's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. But yeah, that's that's what I purchased this year. And I know you came up on some. Pretty sweet rides this year. I did, I did. You know, what I wanted to um, kind of highlight, you know, was at the very beginning of the year, it was actually not one that I bought. There's a couple I'll bought, I'll, I'll maybe reflect on them a little bit, but um, one that I sold at the beginning of this year, like mm -hmm. the second or third week of the year, um, was one uh, I sold it on um, Bring a Trailer, a 1973 Jaguar XJ6 with a Chevy small block swapped into it. So cool. Really cool car. This one in particular was done really well. So the, the story on how I acquired it. So I bought it in 2020. I bought it, shoot, I wanted it, I want to say it was maybe March, April of 2020. Okay. Um, from my uh, car donation client. So I, I help out. There's a car donation company that handle donated vehicles for bunch of chair, different charities here in the Bay Area. Um, and I help them out part-time doing some sales stuff um, and doing photography work for them for some of the nicer cars that they get. And so this one came through, 1973, uh, you know, XJ6. And normally a lot of the nicer stuff is newer, so I'll help them sell it on cars and bids. This is a 73, so it they didn't want to, Cars and Bids would run it, it's too old for them. Right. And Bring a Trailer didn't want to run it because of the way the titling stuff, all the paper trail worked out. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't registered to a business and what have you, or it wasn't registered to the car donation company and it was still in the name of the, the, the donor, they didn't want to run it yeah. unless it was registered to the business and there were a lot of hoops to jump through to do that, and articles of incorporation, it was kind of a, so they were just going to hand sell it through the yard and people were coming through and nobody wanted to buy it. Beautiful car. I was like, this is worth at least 12 and a half all day. Oh yeah. Um, 73, right? 73. So it can have an engine swap. Which it, is, yeah, it's it could. Be yeah, it's three swap right? here in California. It is, it's a 73, so it's the very last year of the Series 1 XJ6 sedan, um, which is great. And because it's just a really cool looking car um, and what also was cool about it is whoever had it before completely redid the interior. Like, they, yeah, they, they did it in vinyl, they didn't do it in Conley leather, but they did it excellently in, in gray vinyl. All the wood was redone. They custom made aluminum sill plates for it. Um, everything, they, they redid a, the stereo, the carpet, the headliner. 
um, refresh, power, all the power windows, everything worked. Um, but the paint and body were nearly flawless. There was one... It was the right color, too. Right? Yeah, it was, it was jet black. Yeah. Um, so it was lowered on, I don't know what suspension, but it was lowered. It had the, X, like the XJS coupe, um, like five-spoke, fat five-spoke wheels on it. Nice, yeah. Um, and, you know, it, had, it, it was just a really, really sharp-looking car. And so long story short is nobody wanted to buy it through, through the car donation place. So I ended up buying it. I was like, look, I'm just going to buy this thing. So I bought it for, I believe it was $8,000. Um, That's a good grab. So I bought it with gas, got a Chevy 350 in it. Great. Ran great. It needed a couple of minor things, like the parking brake didn't work and the speedometer didn't work. Yeah. Um, really minor stuff. So I get it home. The stereo didn't work. I get it home. I, I, I do some work on it. Um, and, oh, and it had a, um, the thermostat housing was looking. So I purchased mm. a new thermostat housing, yeah. all that. I, I do the minor work and I just drove it around the summer. I drove it up and down Highway 1, up on the coast. It ran great. But what's funny is, so the moment I got it home, I'm like, okay, let me figure out like what year 350 is in this thing. So I pulled the, the, the coat off it. It's not a 350. It was a 307. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh no, I screwed up. Like nobody's going to want to buy this car with a lonely 307 in it. Right? Why would they, everyone's going on a 350? Why did they say 350 originally then? Was it just... Well, the dude didn't know. He just said it was a... He just, oh, it's a Chevy oh, small. Oh, gotcha. And you, and you see that's the most common 350. Yeah, 350. Yeah. Like, why would somebody put something that wasn't... You know, if you're going to do the swap, right? You put the 350 in it. Nah, they must have just... Must have they had in hand. Yeah, whatever you got. Now, it ran good. It had an Edelbrock intake on it. It had um, HEI ignition. It had, you know, four barrel. Um, you know, I think it was like a 600 CFM Edelbrock carb on it. It ran well. It ran strong. And as a car, I mean, the interiors and always was, fell apart. Like the the seating surfaces always came apart on those old Jags. I mean, yeah. By this point in time, yeah. So yeah. The fact that he went through and made it nice—that's that's a lot of value added right there for that kind of a car. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I drove it around all summer, and then I I, I imaged it. And I put um, submitted it just at um, to bring a trailer with a reserve of ninety five hundred. Mm. Okay. And I, I had no idea how it was going to sell, right? Oh, I also dynoed it. So I went and got a dyno because I wanted to show people like, hey, the motor, yeah, it's a 307, but it runs strong. It's a healthy motor. Stout. Yes, exactly. And, and I was guessing like at the crank butt dyno, it was going to put down like, I don't know, 250-ish mm -hmm. horsepower. Solid. And you do the math on the dyno, depending on how liberal you are with trying to calculate out crank horsepower. Yeah. Because it was, I think it was about one the top of my head, I think it was about 180. Okay. At the wheels. So low twos. Um, but it was on, a, on like a Mustang dyno. Heartbreaker. So, you know, depend, everyone's got their opinion on how, which direction. Long story short, it ended up being probably between 230 and 240 horse. Sounds about right. A good torque. Yeah. So it, it, was, it was healthy. So I, you know, I had that, so I ran it, right? And then it, it went, the auction went live the first week of January. And right before it went live, I had somebody offer me um, 11.5 for it. Pre, and I was like, oh man. Because I was like, it might not even, hit, I don't know if it won't hit reserve. Why not? You know, because you just don't know. Some people are purists. They don't want to be, you know, they don't want it swapped. Sure. Other people, if they want it swapped, they want it to be some bonkers stro stroker engine or something crazy. Frame <laughs> engine performance. Yeah, it's kind of in this middle ground, right? But it looked good. It looked really sharp. So, man. I was like, I think it'll get, I was like, I think it's got every business to get 12 and a half. Sure. And so I told the guy, I was just like, if you can do, if you can off, if you do 12 and a half, I'll let it go. And he's like, no, the best I can do is 11 and a half. And so I said, you know, screw it. I'm just gonna let it roll. Ooh, gutsy move. I'm just gonna let it roll. Gutsy move. It sold for 20,250. There you go. I'll bring a trailer. My and God. I was over the moon. And, and it ended up hitting that, partly because the winning bidder was down in SoCal, and he actually paid a shop local to me, like a hot rod shop in Martinez. Jack Dick Customs, um, yes, that's their real name. They're actually, I met the owner, really, really cool dude. I had never met him before. I brought him the car and he, he found some minor things wrong with it, you know, like, right. it, you know, we can use some, you know, rear subframe bushings, um, you know, but, but he gave it to you. Know, hey, exterior is a nine and a half out of 10. Interior is a nine and a half out of 10. Um, mechanically, it's very sound. There's some stuff you could do to it, right. you know, um, you know, the rear, rear axle, bearings are a little little wonky because it's got like the inboard it's got a weird suspension set up on those yes. inboard brakes and all that um he's like it's a common thing it's, it's, it's you know 
but he gave it a really clean bill of health, and that's the guy that ended up buying it. Wow. Um, was that it was him and one other person bid it from like thirteen thousand up to north of twenty. And so, if someone, if you've got an auction and someone requests a PPI, don't assume bad things are going to happen. Right, that PPI is done. Yeah, I got all of the money and then some because I said yes to this PPI. I took it to the shop. I let the guys come through it. Yeah, um, and support that it was a good car. So that's how I started off my year was selling the Jaguar and, and basically hitting a grand slam. Yeah, with it is I got a summer's worth of use re- use on it. I sold it. I more than doubled my money. Yeah, um, it's and interesting. Had fun with it, which and that, that 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 does not happen. I mean, it happened, but it not like not the oddballs with like the weird engine swaps. It's like rolling the dice. Like that one person has to be looking at those handful. Of that yeah, you got at least two, two people in the room yeah. bidding against <laughs> each other, and that's what I ended up with. And so it's down in SoCal. This guy had a bunch of really interesting cars. He had a um, uh, uh, what? Well, who made the factory LS swapped uh, solstices? Was it Hammer? Uh, what's, what's my, the company? It sounds company? familiar. Yeah, but they had, yeah, they, like, he had one of those, like, factory LS, so cool, LS2 swap solstices, um, he had a bunch of stuff, um, yeah. so it's off to a good home, and that, that's how I kick-started my year, was selling the Jag and, and pocketing some coin. That's great, and that just goes to show, like, honestly, someone that works on cars too much, uh, an interior, a quality interior and a quality exterior mm-hmm. is seriously bringing big value because you can replace that 307 for less than the cost of oh yeah doing the whole exterior if you had to repaint well, any professional any, or the whole interior or right or just that's the what I'm saying yeah. and people take that for pre- you know discount mm-hmm. that but stuff's huge yeah really big what else what was what else was in your year your well in the rear view mirror yeah of <laughs> looking back right oh boy uh, casting our gazes into the uh, well, cars I sold, so sure. bought seven, sold three. Okay, so kind of a slow year for working on cars. Right. You sold uh, that, You said the, you already said the LX, right? The LX four seventy went out. Got a good price for that. Uh, those are insane. It was a two thousand six, so it was the sure. desired model. That's the one you want. Uh, I sold a Glock VR four to you. Yes, uh, to me. And a car that I kind of miss and that has almost doubled in value, the Magnum SRT eight. Yeah. Those are worth, SRT8s are worth so much right now, that 6.1 Hemi is like the most stout Hemi they yep. made, the 5.7s kind of had a lot more issues. Yeah, they have the, 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 the lifter. All Hemis have like, that to yeah. some extent, but the 6.1s tend to prolong it a little a little bit further sure. off. Except so. yours, right? Yeah, mine, so mine was like, look, listen, <laughs> <laughs> bought the car at like Salinas, it was a sketchy parking lot, Right. Uh, he was offering the car for well less than 50% of its value, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not an idiot, it's not my first rodeo, so like checking over the car found obvious issues, uh, no check engine light on, but like if you watch my video series on the car you find out why, yeah, um, yeah it, you know, it had its issues, right? And uh, I drove it for a long time. Out of all the project cars I've ever owned, I put the most mileage on that thing because it was cool. absolutely a blast. Yeah. That yeah, thing, those are fun. 120 miles an hour, and that car is like 60 in anything else. Mm-hmm. So it's such a good engine. Anyway, and the, being a wagon is super cool. Yeah, you, totally you, just, you just don't see SRT8s rolling around that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, it was fun, and then yeah, the valves decided to, uh, <laughs> or I'm sorry, the lifters decided to make contact with the cam and Oops. stick, and score, yeah. score, score, score. That score, wasn't score. too good. Seven cams ago. Yeah, and then to come to find out when I pulled the gauge cluster that someone did a bunch of shortcuts to wire around the check engine light, so it wasn't just like and electrical tape over, they deleted like the, the solder, like cut it, pulled all the bulbs in the back that illuminate. Did he sell it without a small certificate? It, yes, it wasn't smog, so that was part of the reason. So you find out pretty yeah. immediately. The moment you plug a scanner into it, it's like instantly. Yeah, and uh, good times. So like, all the, <laughs> so I had to replace the get the dash professionally rebuilt yeah. the gauge cluster. Uh, it was super. What a shady guy, man. Yeah. What a yeah. shady guy, and it had like the, the coolant system. The water pump was clearly leaking because. Uh, so the cooling system was full of stop leak when I drained the coolant. Oh, it was like okay. the last half of the fluid was just like silver, like mercury looking material <laughs> coming out. I'm like, oh, this is great. And the water pump was jammed full of the stop leak. Well, it where, where, was, where was the leak? At the water pump. Just so that's the fix? Is you just stop leaking the snot out of it? It didn't leak. It line? didn't leak until I sure. like put new coolant in and then it started leaking like a sieve. And I'm like, ah. Yep. <laughs> and then when I did the, obviously when I took the engine apart and replaced the water pump and everything. You could, when I pulled it out, it was just full of that gum. Yeah. yeah, so. Yay. I do miss that car though. It was kind of, it was weird, man. Cause I don't, I don't really like that, that, that 
Dodge in that period, I didn't like their design for the most part. Yeah. Like, I thought the Charger... It's not was, a handsome car, necessarily. No, but the Magnum was just cool because it was a low-slung wagon mm -hmm. with a massive power plant. For 2006, like... Those were automatic only, right? Only auto. Yeah, it was a Mercedes gearbox. Right. So it was kind of what they, Yeah, what they stuck in their uh, AMGs. So. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of power. Uh, what did we have in Mustangs? 300 horsepower yeah. in 2005, 2006. Yeah, 425. 425. Yeah. So... Yeah. Bring the heat. Bring the heat. So I missed that. I sold it to a buddy of mine uh, who absolutely loves it. He, first thing he did was put like a magnetful exhaust on it. And yeah. It's, oh, it's gorgeous. Nice. Uh, but he enjoys it and now they're worth like, what? I can't remember the last time I've seen one of those in the wild. Boy. Every once in a while they'll creep up uh, and they're like 15k for a sorted one and then like yeah. 12, 10 to 12 for like one that definitely needs a, a new cam. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's crazy to think that like, you know, pre-COVID, like 15, like that's kind of a lot. But now, like, not everything is 15. Like, right. Every, finding something that's, like, nice and correct for under 10, oh, almost for anything, is, is bonkers. So it's so it's, tricky right now. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy. So that's what you sold then. Huh? So three cars, and, and you know, I missed, I think I missed that. Oh, well, I missed the VR4, but uh, not because I had my own waiting yeah. in the winds, but that one was exceptionally clean. Yeah, uh, definitely was a fun car to work on. I don't think I've ever touched a Glock that clean. Like, one owner, sure. California car, it's all eyes. It's just... It was like a time capsule. Yeah, that stuff's fun. Really that's nice. Fun. Um, had some questionable service history in the past, but we've rectified all that. Exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. So and that's that's something, you know, looking forward, not for, not looking backwards, but looking forward. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to sorting out the one last little hiccup that it's got going for it. And then, oh boy. And then put packing, just really packing miles on it. Um, yeah. Because it's just, a, it's just an honest car. Um, and it's just it's just so unique. It, those cars are definitely unique. But having one that original with how beat down and modified those cars were over the years, um, right? It's just really cool. So and, and I didn't leave any maintenance stone unturned on it. So it's like sure. as soon as you sort uh, the turbo issue right now, like it's you don't have to touch it. Yeah. Right. Like exactly. No leaks. New it's, times. It's new water pump. And that's kind of the glory I think a lot of, of keeping stuff stocked for the most part is just like oh, okay. it's a known entity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. You know, so dealing with issues, which is going to happen because it's a DSM, let's face it, in the future, um, should hopefully be pretty much pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, which is good, and that makes me want to put miles on it. So, and, and not be afraid of mishmash of parts from different people in different different workshops. It's a questionable work, questionable yeah. fluids, questionable yeah. <laughs> torque specs. So you sold three cars. Three cars. Yeah. That's it, man. I sold like 25. That's pretty... <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> now the, the extreme majority of those were not mine personally. Yes. Um, that same uh, car donation uh, client of mine, um, I sold the, the lion share was for them. I also handled selling some cars online for some uh, just private parties um, on bring trailer or cars and bids. I sold twenty in total on cars and bids. Wow. Um, a couple of them were mine. One of them was the um, the Vibe GT. Great car. Good, good little car, which you, you got some seat time in. So the 5 GT, super fun. Um, another car that you got seat time in, um, and I put a lot of seat time in, was the Metro. The Metro yes. convertible. Fun. Yes. Dangerous on the highway. Yeah. A little, <laughs> a, a little hairy. Um, and I got first of that, so I took that thing on a road trip. I drove that I drove that bad boy, bad bandage down. And honestly, I did the same with, with the Vibe, although driving to San Diego and back in the Vibe is a whole lot different than worlds, driving. Worlds apart. Driving in the Geo Metro convertible <laughs> to San Diego and back, um, which I did, and I did that in shoot, I think it was February of twenty, so it was a little cold. I have a personal rule. Yeah. Personal rule is if you're in a convertible, you drive at the top now. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. Right. End of story. So it was cold. Like I remember, I, I just the whole drive down and the whole drive back, top down the entire way. Um, you kind of need to in that car, to be fair, because with the top up. It is like a small pick of cave. Yeah. It's, like, it's already a small little car anyway. A wiggly, rattly cave. You guys have to understand too, if you don't know, the, watch our videos on it because uh, Frank has a few, Doug did a review of it, yep. I did a review of it. Uh, this car is a Geo Metro with the roof purely cut off, no extra mm -hmm. chassis reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So you feel it when there's any yep. wind or road imperfections. You have 50 horsepower on the best day it's of its life. Five, okay. On the best day of its <laughs> life, which sure. was 30 years ago. Um, yeah, so you're downplaying it because that's that's an adventure to take that car down five minutes of highway, let alone eight, you know what? eight, six you know what? eight hours, probably more on the yeah, eight it was like eight-ish. Um, 
So yeah, and that's why I drove it down there. So as you said, Doug did a video. I, I drove it down so he can do a review video on it. Because he was just like, I, I, saw, I shot him an email. I'm like, hey man, like you want to review this thing? He's like, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, if you don't want to drive to San Diego, I totally get it. So no, no pressure. I'm like, bro, I'm up for it. Like, yeah. And then they got there. He's like, I can't believe you drove this thing down here. Like, you, you madman. I was like, yeah, well, whatever. But it was cold. It was funny. So like, I literally, I got on Highway 680, which is not far from my house. I drove and I made it 12 miles, 15 miles before my first incident. Um, like a huge monster, like pillow, like blew across the road, and I hit it. Okay. And I was, of, all which, things, of all the things that yeah. hit, it's like what Wiley Coyote or something, like about to fall into the pillow factory after right. it falls from the sky, but <laughs> he misses it and falls into like the knife sharpening. Uh, oh yeah. In order. Right. But I actually hit the pillow factory, so it hit the large pillow, um, pulled over, but it had like blown up and like all the fluff completely wadded itself up around the axle. Oh. And tore the boot. It tore the axle boot. So at that point, I was like, well, whatever, I'm just going to suck it up. So I went, I drove there and drove back. And it was fine, it wasn't clicking or nothing, but it, it, it sl ended up slinging all the grease out of the axle. Oh, yeah. So I purchased a replacement axle and just threw it in with the auction. Like, hey, it comes with a, comes with a new axle. And that rebuilt aftermarket axle was like 40 bucks. It's like zero dollars. Oh, exactly. Everything on that car is no money. Um, like, oh no, like I have to replace the valves. Well, there's six valves total. Yeah. Nothing, there's nothing on that car. It's like working on a lawnmower. So it you? was fun. Yeah, going on that road trip, taking it down there. Um, and that, you know, that might now be the most famous Geo Metro convertible on the planet. Because I know I made some content with it. You did your video with it. Doug reviewed it. Um, I know Doug actually talked about that car and reviewing it on the, the Smoking Tire podcast with, with Matt. It had, it had um, to have been one of the cleanest examples, period, still in existence. Because I, I've seen other ones that have come up and it were probably a little bit cleaner. That paint but were look, automatics. Yeah, that's a huge difference, right? Yeah. That three speed, the, the five speed manual with three speed non overdrive auto. Yeah. With like no horsepower behind it. It's yeah. Just, you take a one out of 10 performer to a 0 0.04 yeah, just from performer. Faster. <laughs> so um, I, I, had, I had my fun with, with that car in, in 21 because um, I bought it in early 21. I ended up selling it. I think it sold in May of 21. Um, and it was just fun. It was quirky. It turned a lot of heads. Yep. You know, I, I did okay with it on the back end as far as what I paid for it. Sure. And, into it, and then what I sold it. You know, um, obviously it took some labor work driving to San Diego and back, but it was worth it, and it was, yeah. and it was fun. And it was just a good time. I mean, it's kind of fun drive that thing. You know, going up, going up and down the grapevine was pretty hairy in that. So you're doing 40 miles an hour. You with put all your the on. <laughs> no, you just stick with the big rigs, which is not a fun place to be in that True. Um, but we did it, and that's that's that was one of my highlights. Yeah, the one was, was doing all that. What a perfect buzz around town car, though. Oh yeah, you can park yeah. it anywhere. It's like you don't have to worry about putting the top up because no one's gonna take it. What's the, what are they looking for in your geometric convertible? Yeah, exactly. Just right. Right. If okay. anything, it'll just pe get people like looking in it just for like, what is this thing? Not like for like looking for like your wares. They might take the top off because that thing was just tucked under that plastic. Do you remember how? It was yeah, yeah, yeah. That you unfurl the little plastic. Oh boy. The little plastic cover. That was my biggest fear of driving that car on the highway. That oh yeah, it's gonna open like a pair. Shoot. Just sling off <laughs> behind you, take on a motorcycle or something brutal. Well, yeah, no, it's um, it was it was a fun little fun little jelly bean. And then the guy, so it was funny. Just real quick to wrap that thing up. The guy, the, the winning bidder on cars and bids because it went for shoot, I think it was fifty seven. Yeah, that's right. Sold. That sounds about right. Um, and it, so the guy I sold it to, the ma absolute madman, um, and I mean that all the best possible ways. So he bought that thing, and he ended up. Um, also, at the same time, he purchased from out of state and was having it shipped to him uh, a 92 Cavalier convertible. Oh, yeah. A red, bright red. So he's going to have a bright red Cavalier convertible and a bright blue uh, Metro convertible. And I told him he's got to get like a, a white Sunbird convertible. So he's got the red, white, and blue yes. domestic GM convertible trio. Um, so he, absolute madman, great, did a red eyed Greyhound from SoCal. Uh, I met him at the, I met him, I picked him up at the, on like a Saturday at like 8.30 in the morning at the Oakland Greyhound station. Oh man. Um, he paid me for the car, I um, took an Uber back, and then he drove it, he was like, yeah, I'm going to drive across the, the Bay Bridge, hang out in San Francisco for a little bit, and then drive, and then drive it back home, and just make a long, long day. So yeah, so he kind of set himself up for um, 
do kind of set himself up for failure there a little bit. But he, um, yeah, he texted me the next day. He's like, dude, this car's not for me. Um, he's like, can I just like mail you the title back and then you can just like sell to the second place bidder? I was, I was like, I was like, oh. I'm more than happy. I was like, I'm not in a position to like pop, like go down to SoCal and pick this car up and bring it back. Like, I just, I'm sorry. Like, I, you know, I yeah. don't want to say cat hunter, but like, I can't. I'm sorry you don't like a geometric convertible. Like, I was very explicit in my my personal video about that car that it's kind of a terrible car, but it excels in being cute and adorable and cheap to run. Right. But it's objectively not a good car. Um, you know, so I was like, how about this? Like, I'm more than happy to help you out though. I know I have personally purchased a car before and been like, what have I done? You know, yeah, that sinking sure. feeling, yeah. like, where you like, that I remo up. instant remorse, uh -huh. right? And I was like, dude, I've been there, so let me let me help you out. I don't have a problem. Like, I'll reach out to the guys at Cars and Bids. I'll see if they can facilitate communication between you and the second place bidder um, and make that happen. I'm not in a position to take the car back um, because of buyer's remorse, but, you know, I've been there. Let me see what I can do. So I reached out to Cars and Bids, and they said, yeah, not a problem. Um, we'll set them up. And so they, I, I don't know what became of that, but I do know it ended up showing up on Rad for Sale like a month and a half later, the same car. No way. And it went for, I don't remember how much, I think it went for like 3,900. Yeah, a little less visibility. Or four grand or something yeah. like that. Plus it's like, it's, it all, a lot of times if, if it run, if it ran once and then runs again shortly thereafter, it loses some of its luster. Sure, that makes it, sense. You know, yeah. There's a reason like, why it's for sale. Yeah, it's like, well, because it's a geometric vertical, that's why it's for sale. Again. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, it was interesting to see how that all played out. So oh. um, that was, that was a part of an adventurous, Automotive 21 for me. What else? What else did you do? Yeah, just a couple. Can't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> that's why. I, that's How why excited I, I was. That's why I tied mine up because I have maybe arguably the worst handwriting. Yeah, in I write like a doctor and half of it's uh, hieroglyphs. And <laughs> I don't even know. So I just had some bullet points to go over. Uh, sure. Kind of like some big reflect reflection points that were great. Starting mm -hmm. this podcast, obviously. Yes, that's we, on my list. Of we that we had right. talked about this uh, quite a bit, so it was cool to like finally connect uh -huh. and like going through the logistics of it, like just saying, "Hell, let's just do it." Like, yeah. here's here's where it came from, guys. If you want genesis of why this podcast started, is mm -hmm. every time Frank and myself interacted. Whether it was like, oh, I'm going to look at a car, or like, I'm thinking about buying this. It turned into like a two-hour conversation. Exactly. Where it's like, why are we just recording this nonsense? We like see eye to eye. Other fools can yeah. buy them on this with us. And most people are lost, like, the, the, the stupid knowledge we have of like obscure cars and uh, the, the quirky weird stuff we like. Right. It just for whatever reason, you know, we can't have a we can't have a five-minute conversation, guys. And it's interesting. It's just like half of me thinks like is do we like all the, the quirky weird stuff because that's just kind of like what we like because i know there's a lot of people that like that's what they do is they, they like the weirder stuff the more unusual stuff or is it yeah. more is it just like we've been in, looking at car stuff for so long that like the usual stuff doesn't excite us anymore like our cold dead hearts like oh that's a clean 5.0 mustang it's just like i don't care less about that more than i would care about you know uh a Mercury Capri Turbo oh, yeah. Convertible XR2 or XR2 something like package, that. Yeah. Exactly. Like that. Is it like? Are we just drawn towards the weird stuff because they're weird, or is it like, like the, like the sex addict deviant that like can't do anything unless they're like skydiving and like being choked by like an actual like chimpanzee or something like it's, that. It's more common than you think. It is. It is. And so it's just like, what is? Is that like the only way that we can get like our automotive jollies is by like finding all the weird stuff? And we've been like that for a while because our car histories are just wild too. We're all over the map. Mm -hmm. like what kind of cars we, yeah. we went after and have hunted. But I yeah. I just wanted to put that as a big a big bullet point is starting the actual podcast you guys are listening to nowadays. Yeah, and if you haven't noticed by listening and or seeing, um, I'm hoping our quality is a lot better today. We have actual microphones. The last two episodes, we, we got bailed out just because that was like our backup recording because we had a little bit of a snafu. Right. And so um, this will hopefully continue to develop and grow within the new year is not just the quality that you're hearing through the microphone, but additionally, just uh, things will continue to grow and get better. And I'm glad that we did start this personally as well in, in 21. I also had that on my list. What else? Yeah, we, we wanted to come across as truly amateur, so we nailed it mm -hmm. uh, with our production values. Oh, yes. But uh, a couple other things, uh, reflecting back, the crazy car market really took off <laughs> in 2021, Yeah, uh, where we saw values of the cars that we used to be able to just buy without a challenge, like mm -hmm. plenty of them. 
uh, good prices. Now they're like valuable commodities. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. I just want to make a quick note of that. Uh, we uh, inch closer and closer to our electric, autonomous cars this year, yep. uh, which is, yeah, it's a mixed bag, right? So there's still like really good analog cars out there to get out there and experience. And we talk about most of those cars. So we always say, you guys, you guys got to try it while it's still here. Yes. You know, that yes, combined with prices, yeah, that combined with the prices is making it pretty, pretty rare to get that experience. Sure. Uh, and then we did some cool car stuff. Uh, yeah. we, we didn't do a lot, but we did go to Sonoma Raceway uh, mm -hmm. and watch the spectator drags where people were just driving yeah, yeah. on the cars. Uh, and the good guys. We went to a good guys show in Pleasanton, not too far away from here. Uh, and it was the auto or the autocross. Yeah, autocross yeah. It was yeah. super awesome. Yeah, it was so, legit. It's funny because it's like a, it was like a mashup of like. Like four uh, Ford Focus STs and, and <laughs> right. RSs and stuff, and then the rest of it was just like, like a pro stock like drag like truck, and then like an El Camino, and then like a C4 Corvette, and like all this like V8 American muscle stuff. So it's kind of a, an interesting yeah mix, and we got to get the, you know the kids out there to to partake in some of that and, and, and vibe in that, and just get some sun and get out, and, and that was fun too. And then as far as some of the last bits and, bits and pieces of stuff, I did to kind of close out the year. Um, you know, I, I did buy the, the Gallant VR4, number 1114, so that's going to be part of what I'm going to be doing next year, um, is, is stacking miles on that. Um, I bought the little Subaru Sandbar, um, which is another project that's moving forward. Um, I, uh, let's see, what else did I do? I did a lot of photography work and video work on cars uh, in, in 21, um, you know, for a lot of, you know, just all kinds of different clients, and that actually led to what I'm going to say is inarguably the best car that I got some seat time in was uh, I had a just a, a individual owner client reach out to me to shoot um, some video and, and still photography work for their um, their 18 uh, 911 GT3 right. six speed. Um, a lot of the stuff that you want, none of the stuff that you didn't. So I had the carbon ceramic brakes, had the carbon sport bucket seats, which I thought I was gonna hate, and they were actually, getting in and out of them sucks, but once you're in them, they're actually really comfy, and they, they, I, I didn't find myself getting tired in them. Um, car 3,700 miles on it. Wow, what a car, man. That, yeah, that, that engine is unrealistically good. It just, and all, you know, I didn't, you know, it's not my car, so I wasn't bouncing it off the rev limiter or anything like that. Of course not. But you know, you bring it to eight hand and it, it, that's where it wants to be. And this the shift action is super smooth. Um, it's funny because everything, it's got the, the rev match if you want it, you put it in sport mode and it'll, it'll auto rev match and it'll do, it just does so many things good. But with the, like the GT, like the two and the three, I think outsiders looking in just say, ah, oh, it's a, you know, it's a more hardcore Porsche, but like that car is such a unique item like the personality of the engine, uh, usually the good amount of weight reduction that goes into that. It's an excellently engineered vehicle. Yeah. Like I mean, it's, it's, you, it's, you can't just judge it as another 911. You really, it's... And it's, that's the thing, even another 911 would be a good thing. Oh, totally. it's, yeah. But it's, it's, yeah, the delta between, you know, a Carrera S and that car is wild. Is, is yeah, is crazy. It's not like going from like your... I'm trying to think of a good analog, but just like going from the the, the mid level, uh, you know, Mustang to the the GT, the GT to the GT three hundred and fifty, and even that's actually a pretty a pretty big jump. But yeah. just you know, it's not it's not like a wing and an appearance package. No, I mean, it's, it's not just a horsepower bump either. It's like a full. It's like, everything, hand and that, that car is just so. It's such a brilliant car that will forever be involved. That nine nine one dot two. That motor with that transmission um, is will be an all-time car, and that's why they're that's why they're trafficking. If I remember, I think the sticker on that car was like one forty. That sounds new. about right. Yeah. Um, and if you sold that right now, it would sell for probably two thirty. Yeah, should have bought it when it was new. Yeah, and so you know there there's and there's a reason for that, and that's not gonna that's not gonna become a sub hundred thousand dollar car here. Like that's gonna be no, that's never. gonna be all timer. Never. It's gonna be. It's just that motor is so special, and so the fact I got to spend some seat time in it and, and, and real seat time in it, not driving around the parking lot, but um, put some miles on it. The video I, I have for that, um, I, I haven't published. I haven't put up yet because I'm waiting for the guy to 
finally get around to, to listing it. I think he's, he wanted to sell it for a, VA, a brand new SMR VA Vantage. I would rather have the GT3. Yes. Um, and so maybe he's come to that realization because he, I told him, hey, the moment this thing, you get this thing listed, let me know. Um, and I'll, I'll have the video go live to get more eyeballs on it. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's been crickets. So shouldn't have any problems on that. I don't know. But that was a lot of fun. And I'm glad I got to do that. That was my best drive of 21. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of that kind of rounds out my year. You know, we, we, we doubled back on the start of the podcast. I'm glad we did that. That's a lot of fun. I mean, I think it's going to continue to be. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that was it. Do you... Uh, do you want to keep another thing alive? Do you have anything to add on at the end of the year before you try and um, ruin my day and um, make me what? become wrong with a, a quiz on a piece of automotive ad copy? How dare you? How dare you? Um, no, it's uh, just like you said, looking back, I mean, I'm glad we started the podcast. Sure. Uh, it's kind of sense. The listeners aren't, but we are. Yeah, I mean, for the five of you listening currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there might be just to push through it, you know, and to actually make it happen. I think that's the biggest step. It's like starting a new car project. One of, one of my hardest things to do is like get a new car in the garage and actually start working on it. Yeah. Because once you commit to that car, you're kind of in there, yeah. especially for the kind of jobs I do. So, uh, yeah, just getting it started, I think, was the big thing. And it, it's been super fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like, it, it's just super cool. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Like, even if you are it's half as much as we're enjoying it, we're doing we're doing okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll take that. And so, um, please, please continue to listen, please. Um, yes. So, yeah, what, do you, what do you got for me? Is you gonna the heat? I think it is time. So it's our automotive print ad quiz, and uh, basically, what we do on this little section of the show is we go over a print ad taken from a magazine, obviously, eighties, uh, nineties, early two thousands, or fair game. Absolutely. Uh, we get to read the ad, excluding obvious things like manufacturer and anything else, like specific taglines that we give away the brand, obviously. Right. right. Uh, but these print ads are just so amazing. We can describe the print ad, we can do all that, read all the details. The other person has three chances, and only three chances, That's right. to guess what vehicle you're talking about. They get hints every time they mess up, uh, and we get to determine how strong the hints are based on how difficult the ad is. Absolutely. Let's I'm ready. I'm pretty I'm for this one. Okay. We've been doing really good lately. So. Yeah, we're on a hot streak. And the last one you got um, was really quite difficult. It was probably an 8.9 out of 10 as far as the difficulty scale. So Might have been the hardest one we've done. I think it was. Just because... I, I think so. Said. Yeah, yeah, but you got it. So I'm curious. You're probably you're probably going to come high and tight with the fastball here. Let's see. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Are you guys ready for this? I'm ready. Frank, are you ready? Oh, I'm juiced. Let's go. Okay, cool. The ad itself is the picture of the car is located within the reflection of someone wearing aviator sunglasses. Oh, boy. So it's, it's already an awesome ad. So the first line, think hot, think blank. Oh, oh dirty. Continue. Think fast. Okay. Dual overhead cams. 16 valves and 127 horsepower. Ooh, okay. Think big. Room for live-in comfort. Think ahead. When I think fast, <laughs> and I, when I think fast, I don't think big. And when I think fast and big, I don't think 127 horsepower. <laughs> but come on, okay, let's, let's keep going. We're taking a picture. We are. Think ahead. Four-wheel disc brakes okay. and fully independent suspension. Sure. Think car and driver. Okay. Okay. Shut out. Okay. They voted blank as one of the year's best cars in its first year. Okay. So I um, hit the scene, okay. immediately made the list. Okay. Now stop thinking and start moving. Call blank for more information. Ugh, that's all I get. Blank. That's all I get. You got oh, some good man. stuff there. <laughs> it's not a lot. I mean. But... <laughs> Good, vague stuff, fast, big. Um, okay, so we've got dual overhead cam, yes. four wheel disc brakes, quote unquote big, but I'm gonna I'm gonna like throw a whole bucket of salt on top of that. Mm. Dual overhead cam, car and driver really did. The, what, what was the car and driver quote? It was their car. It made their uh, oh, it just made ten best cars list. Okay, so it made, that's pretty prestigious. Made, I guess ten best list when it came out. Hundred dual overhead cam, one hundred and twenty seven horsepower. So when I think dual overhead cam on 127 horsepower, 
I think of Mazda. I don't, I can't think of any Toyota products that dead on hit that horsepower mark. They're either a little bit below or a little bit above that. I can't think of any Honda products, dual overhead cam. Mm -hmm. So I'm immediately thinking of Japan. Big, okay. Um, I, I don't want too much dead air and me going um in our recording here. So I think what I'm gonna go is, I'm just gonna shoot from the hip, because I'm, oh man, this might be a dead axle though, in the rear. Well, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna say Mazda, 626, final answer. It is not the Mazda 626. Okay. Okay. That was a good guess. Okay. Do you have, do you have, do you have a hint for me, perhaps? Yeah, I do. Um, let me see. I can give you a hint. Okay. <laughs> it might be too. Let me, nope. let me hear this. I don't want to. I want to keep it like. Uh, So, God, fast. What do you yeah. want to know? What do you want? To, what do you want a little more I clarity? I don't know. Um, Is there something you want a little clarity on? How about if I tell you it's a wow? No. How about if I tell you it's a domestic? Okay. Is that I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask for yeah. domestic. I'll um, give you. Okay, so domestic. Man. I was thinking that too. Um, I don't know. I mean, how how incestual are you going here on on your picks? Because I'm thinking, I, outside there's something teal that I think hits, fits this rubric pretty well. Because yes. I wouldn't qualify this big, but I'm also not a marketeer. Sure. Marketeers are going to take something. That's like, do you remember the Buick Verano commercial with Shaq? Yeah. And he gets inside, he's like, look how roomy it is. His and then you look at him, like, the rear view. Yeah, mirror. you're like, bro, you're <laughs> like making like, you look like you're going to climb out of a clown car. Um, so I'm going to say. There's no way. I'm gonna say Tracer LTS. Think hot. Think Tracer LTS. <laughs> the only thing that threw me off was the car and driver thing because I didn't think. <sighs> it made, I, I, I would, I'm blown away that that car made the car and driver it ten, made, top it, ten list. It was the cover of uh, Motor Track too oh, when boy. it came out. So this okay. car is a big deal. So you nailed it. Think hot. Think Tracer LTS. I've got a YouTube video I do want to play for you with that same theme. Uh, this car actually was a big deal for Mercury when it came out because Mercury at the time was just like luxury Ford, right? Sure. Uh, so the Tracer LTS, which is actually a Mazda 3T3, so you're right. super close. There. I knew the motor. I thought I was like, that is horsepower power with the motor. The protege, the protege ran, the early protégés ran the 1.8. They the did run the 1.8 because they get both. You can get a 1.6 and a 1.8 in the protege, right? Right. And I think in the then two liter after that. But, but even, I would say a pro. I mean, that car is a lot of protege, but. I, I dare not call a protege big. I mean, it's really I mean, a Ford Escort sedan too. Yeah, like yeah, but they didn't make a GT sedan, so the the, the Ford Escort sedan never got that 1.8 Mazda engine. Correct. Yeah, so it was funny that you went with Mazda, who was the designer of the engine and the transmission. Well, that's the, that's the only one I can pin down at dual overhead cam with that horsepower mark is like 127. Like, okay, that thing that, that sounds like the Mazda 1.8. Yep. Um, Great engine. The Miata later had it. Ninety four. Yes. yes. I just didn't. I didn't know. I just didn't know if you were going to be uh, self-flagellating yourself enough to pick one of the cars you got here in the stable. Now, if I didn't own one, I don't think you would have come up with it as easily. But here's probably check, not. Check the ad. It's pretty cool. It's in the <laughs> aviator sunglasses. I like. like I like the guy. Ad, right. I, look, I like the like. There's just like a hint of mustache. Yeah. Coming through. <laughs> All business. Exactly. exactly. Pretty cool ad, though, right? That's that's fantastic. Yeah. I think Trace LTS. Yeah, you yeah. nailed it, man. Uh, oh, I think this was, Mercury. this was the age of dual overhead cam fours, right? That was all you needed. Oh, yeah. Your yeah, hot car, it. dual overhead cam four, you got it. You're, you're good to go. All right. Well, man, you flew Keep the alive. Yeah, we are. We are on top of it. I figured you'd get it just because I own one and I'm always yeah, on the Yeah, if, if you didn't own one, I don't think I would, I don't think I would have pinned it down. Um, it's such a rare car, but they made such a big deal. If you go back at like the early '90s and read all the publications and all the reviews about it, through the roof, like every. It was the, it was the same deal, and I'd like to get one, even though it's a garbage car. Um, <laughs> is the I guess it would be Jenna, I think. 
um, the 99 to, I think, 2002 Mercury Cougar. Yes. That was like the... The new future looking one. Right, yeah. yeah. It had like a 2.5 like V6 in it from like the Contour. It was like a, it was like a Contour Coupe, basically. The Duratec V6. That's right. Yep. Yes. Um, that Cougar reminded me of someone that was super drunk, saw a 2G Eclipse, then like slept two hours, woke up and tried to make their own version of it. You know what I think that car is? <laughs> I always think that car, that car is Limp Biscuit. Oh God. And by that I mean it was just like, right when it came out, it was, it was hot. Like, it was hot. It was yeah. like, oh my God, this car is fantastic. This, yeah. is, one of, this is one of the greatest offerings it wasn't that it's ever been made. It wasn't it, No, exactly. No $3 <laughs> bill, y'all. But it, um, after, and then it was something like six months later, just became, just got pillory. Just absolutely oh, became oh, just like a joke and it was just like a garbage car that nobody likes and it just, it just you know, was wearing its red Yankee hat 90 backwards. 90% of it, those were automatic too. Uh, sure. But did you know you could get the V6 with a manual and it was exceptionally You could, you could exceptionally get a V6 with a manual. And I think, I think Ford almost made, if I remember correctly, I feel like they almost made a version with the motor and tranny out of the Contour SVT. Would have been sweet. To the point where they never actually, you couldn't get it, like they never actually, it never actually came to market, but there are like parts catalogs, like intra Ford, that like still list part numbers for the stuff to, to build it. So like if you went to like, you know, probably not now, but in, in the day, if you like went to like your local parts department and you had the correct part number, you could order all the parts to build your own. Like that's how far down the line that development made it, and then it just said, nah, never mind, let's not bring it to market. And so you would have the, I don't remember what the power was in the, the SVT Contour. Was Contour like SVT 205. was just over 200, yep. Yeah, I think it was like 205. And so that, that was, was touched by Cosworth, I believe, that, that head. I think that, so. That image. I think that's the difference. I think so. Because it was up from like 175. Yeah. That'd be a fun car, I'd like a Contour SVT. I think they had some engine issues. They did. Like there, it yeah. was hard to work on too. Um, it had a timing chain. Yeah, they, they, they contoured it into the engine bay. Yeah. Um, was the uh, Cougar shared the chassis with that? I think so. Wow. I think it was the same okay. basic platform. And I think it was like the Ford Mondeo. In, in it was exactly a Ford Mondeo. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Uh, it was like the Ford Mondeo 2 something. I think they called it like yeah. the 205 or something. ST 205 or something. And that is today's Mercury Minute. Yeah. <laughs> glad, glad you guys are hanging around. Yes. But uh, if I see a manual V6 Cougar, I'm going to. You just said, yes, just so you know. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> it's Cougar time. Cougar hunter. Um, what uh, what kind of PCP are, are you been dabbling in? Uh, the uh, cheapest, cheapest and the most available car. kind. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. What's your um, progress on these progress on these project cars? So I had a fun a fun. Uh, it's going to smog is always a good time. Oh boy. Said no one at California ever. problems. Yeah. No. So uh, the tracer I've done a lot of work on. It's 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 never sat. So this car has two hundred sixty thousand miles. And uh, if you're thinking hot, you're not thinking tracer LTS with two hundred sixty thousand <laughs> miles. But anyway, it you're runs. Thinking sad trombone noises. Yeah. Exactly. Like zip ties and bubble gum holding it together. Uh, but it drives fairly well. Uh, super impressed with how it drives. And I've had no issues. I put a lot of mileage on it after all the work I did. Yeah. So I, I take it into smog, and this is the most embarrassing thing, is <laughs> when someone pulls your car into smog, you can see it get on the rolling road and start to, you know, idling while they're doing their tests. <laughs> you look over, and all the coolant is being vomited out of the front <laughs> of your car. And you're like, oh, man, who did the work to this thing? <laughs> so sad, man. And, you know, especially after the tech guy just says, wow, I've never seen a clean one of these, like, look at your engine bay. And I'm like, yeah, just watch this. Uh, so it starts uh, puking up coolant, and then at the same time, I smell fuel. Right, right. So uh, I didn't see any fuel at the time, but later, come to find out, it was also getting rid of some of it. It's like weight reduction. It was like, man, am I getting rid of some holes? Yeah, are we going to do our specs here? Are we going to see what our curb weight is? Let me get rid of some stuff. Uh, but honestly, that was embarrassing. Couldn't smog it, pulled it out. Uh, it was just coolant coming out of the overflow reservoir, so it was yeah. clearly overheating. Just running hot. Yeah. yeah, running super hot, and the water pump and timing belt were just done not too long ago, so I didn't think it was the water pump seize. That's usually sure. what it is, something yeah. like that, right? You know, got to bit head gasket issue. Um, but look, and the switch that tells the fan to come on, the radiator fan, right. was completely sheared off, like just 30-year-old plastic yeah. that had been around the world, what, 
20 times by now, <laughs> uh, just completely turned to dust in my hand and I saw that it had, it had come apart. So I replaced that switch and that took care of that part. Cool. Which is fine. No more, no more overheating. Uh, the fuel was the filler hose, the rubber connector for where you fill up. There's a metal pipe that goes down. Then yes. there's an intermediate hose that connects to your tank. Got it. This hose, I, I, I crap you not. I get into the car, shine a flashlight up, and there were literally stress cracks through the Fall entire down. hose. Yes. I'm like, boy, I was like probably two Phillips away from just like dumping. The neck just like splitting off of it. And just all the gas coming out as I'm filling up. Yeah. Kind of scenario where people are staring at you. Yay. $5 a gallon on the ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was a pretty easy fix, kind of hard to accessibility wise, but just putting a new hose in, sourced yeah. a, a replacement hose. So it took care was of that. Available, was that still available at the dealer? No, I couldn't find the actual OEM one, so I just got it through local parts store. Okay. Uh, they were able to was, network one in. Yeah. Like, I'm sure day. I mean it's the same for an escort, right? Exactly. In the Mazda 323. Okay. So it's not, some, it's not some. Not super rare, but. Part. Yeah, it just. Who's buying those nowadays? Like Nobody? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It means they're cheap because they're on a shelf somewhere that some supplier wants oh, to get rid of. They definitely dusted it off, whatever yeah. warehouse this thing came out of. Yeah. Uh, but that replaced that. And then while I was there, I was having such a good streak. You know, when you're working on a car and everything oh, you're boy. doing, it's working. Uh -huh. So I'm like, you know what? The e brake never worked. So uh, quite a process to adjust the e brake. Uh, there's a connection. You can tighten the line underneath, still nothing there. I checked the bias where the, it splits because it's correct. It's both sides have an e brake. Yep. Uh, that was good. And then I just. Same with like Miata brakes, and if you watch me do the brakes on my Miata recently, right. there's a 14 millimeter bolt, and a lot of people that do brakes don't know about this because it has fresh brakes on it. Sure. You pull that bolt off, and there's an adjustment screw. Got it. And that's how you tighten your brakes. So if someone replaced and the brakes. And it's on the back side of the backing plate on the rear? It's on the back of the caliper, like physically oh, the connected caliper. to the caliper. So you dig in, uh, I can't remember, four millimeter Allen key, mm -hmm. and just kind of tighten it. If you go too far, your brakes will always drag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just set those. Now I've got a working e brake, so. Literally under forty dollars worth of parts in an afternoon of labor. I fixed a coolant leak, overheating leak. I fixed a fuel leak, and the e-brake works. Now you get to hold your breath when you go to smog. Oh boy! I hope, hope it doesn't redeem myself. The circle, the circle it continues. So that was my uh, PCP. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, awkward situation turned into a pretty good highlight for the car. So yes. Well, how about you? What kind of PCP are you doing on your uh, side of town? You know what? I'm still getting hot off my own supply. Um, Ooh, I'm yeah. still slowly chipping away because it's funny. Because it should be one of the easier timing belts jobs possible. Yes. Is on this this 924 turbo. So where we left last left off in the in the saga was I had the timing I had the the water pump bolted up and that was about it. So I I now got the timing belt on Ooh. the tensioner on. I've got all the bits and pieces. I've got the um I've got coolant in the cooling system. And um, I go to tension up the timing belt, mm -hmm. and I realize that, uh, long story short is I don't have the proper tensioning tool. Uh, there is a BMW, sorry, not BMW, but a Volkswagen Audi specific That was like a reflex. Pin wrench. It was a reflex. It was. Said BMW requires it was. a special like tool. The, the, the BMW just <laughs> came back to haunt me. But no, um, yeah, it's a specific Audi Volkswagen specific tool. And it's a it's a pin wrench that you need to tension up the tensioner. Yep. Um, and it's it's not like a typical like the same it's not like the same pin wrench you would use for like a like an angle grinder to like take the wheels on and off because the pins themselves are a little smaller okay. so you can't even get like a more universal style got pin wrench in there. It's got to be the proper one and it's got the bend at the right angle so you can actually get it in there to actually tension it up. And I think if I if I just went like if I was stuck on the side of the road or something like that, um, and I think if I got like a, a pry bar in there or something, I could have done it. Mm. But I don't really want to use like I don't want to do something and potentially mar up that ten the face of the tensioner. Yeah, true. Because then I don't want to you know have it wear the timing belt prematurely and take out a timing belt like five thousand miles on the road. Probably I put a nick in the yeah in the tensioner. Not super easy to source another tensioner probably for that. Um, not too bad because it's the same, it's the same as like a, a Volkswagen two liter from whatever, 1977 to like 1997. Still be better left off your list of things to do. Correct. So I spent, like I was able to get the tool, I had it ordered online, so I couldn't finish it up, but I just got the tool in a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, and so I can, I can now properly tension the timing belt. Kind of an important thing to do. Yeah. So um, slow, I have that now. Slow and steady swings the axe, right, when it comes to timing belts. 
Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, not a lot of progress. That's where I'm at with that. I'm slowly getting that thing ready. I'd like to roll that out of the garage. Um, and I think maybe sometime soon we, should, I, I, we need to have a discussion of what I'm gonna do with that car. Yeah. Once it's smogged and tagged, tagged and bagged and ready to go, um, that'll be a discussion for another day. Perhaps the next compelling episode. Um, but yeah, so that, that's where I'm at with that car, and then I'll be able to get the Galant in, wrestle a turbo off it, and we'll go from there. I'm excited. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I'm up to. That's all the PCP that I'm abusing. Um, I think that's it. You got anything else to close this bad mamma jamma down? I think that's it. I, I hope you guys liked us reflecting uh, back last year, and I hope you take some time to do the same. Um, yes. You know, look at the for otherwise. It was, it's been an interesting world, and I hope you guys have done some pretty cool stuff the past year, you know. Uh, we got a whole year ahead of us with some really cool stuff coming up. And uh, I know. I'm but, pumped. I'm pumped for 22. Um, you know, it, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be a really, really fun, good year, and that's kind of the, the lens that I'm choosing to look at everything through. Sure. Or we'll be a fiery brimstone uh, hellfire apocalypse, which, you know, is, is also in the cards. Some, some people are into that shit, man. Come on. They man. are. That's true. <laughs> There's going to be <laughs> someone's pleasure is someone else's pain. Exactly. There's the doomsday preppers that are just sitting there like, Sharpening an axe somewhere in a basement. I told you. Mm -hmm. Watching, watching tremors and just like waiting for the end. Um, just don't look at my ammunition supply, Frank, before you leave. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I don't. I don't need to imbibe in that. But um, <laughs> thank you, y'alls, for listening. Hopefully, the sound quality is greatly improved, and we'll continue to grow this thing moving forward. So thank you for being a part of our twenty-one and into twenty-two, and that's it. Thanks, yeah. man. Thanks for tuning in for another episode, and Happy New Year's to all you out there. Happy man. trails to you. We'll see you on the next adventure. Bye. See you guys. Whoa.